Hello, and welcome to the Marketplace Open Enrollment in Illinois. Today's webinar is taking place on September 27, 2017. Just a few housekeeping instructions for the webinar. All attendees are in listen-only mode. This webinar has too many attendees for questions to be submitted over the phone. Everyone can submit questions at any time using the question feature. To use the question feature, you may email me at a Kennedy, K E N N E D Y, at aidschicago.org, or go to the right side of your computer. And during the session, you can use a button that is indicated with your raising your hand if you have a question. If there are more questions that can be answered during a session, the organizer may ask you to type in the question in a question login so they can address the question later. We will be doing all questions at the end and leave room for that. But for now, we're going to get right in to the webinar. Again, my name is Elena Kennedy. I am the Health Equity Manager here at the AIDS Foundation of Chicago. We are so excited to have all of you on the webinar today listening. This is an important time. The time to purchase new health insurance plan for 2018 is almost here, as many of you know. Open enrollment begins November 1st, 2017, and runs through December 15th, 2017. In order to have coverage on January 1st of 2018, you must either renew the plan you have or select and enroll in a new plan by De December 15th, 2017. It takes patience and time to enroll in health insurance coverage each year, but it gives you the control to pivot to a new plan if your lifestyle demands a change. Getting hurt or sick isn't something a person wants to happen, but unexpected medical events do occur. Having a health insurance plan helps pay for those unexpected costs. However, if you are someone living with HIV, there are predictable and ongoing medical costs. With linkage to HIV medication and medical care, we can virtually eliminate HIV transmission. HIV positive persons receiving treatment can reduce HIV transmission by nearly 100%. This, as many of you know, is called viral suppression. Individuals are virtually suppressed, do not transmit HIV, and have much better health outcomes. Having health insurance, if you are living with HIV, helps provide financial protection against ongoing large medical bills and keeps you healthier. So to get started today, the panelists will address how Marketplace Open Enrollment works in Illinois, how we can engage individuals, including those living with HIV or vulnerable to HIV through outreach and education, as well as answer the many questions I know many of you have. All right, so to get into it once again, I will be introducing Stephanie Becker. Stephanie Becker is the Senior Policy Specialist at the Shriver National Center on Poverty Law. Welcome, Stephanie. Hi, everyone. Uh, you guys can hear me okay, Elena? We certainly can. Okay, wonderful. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to talk today about open enrollment which, as Elena said, is just around the corner, um, and what you can expect um, given sort of all the noise and confusion recently around ACA repeal. Um, but before I start with the open enrollment nuts and bolts, I wanted to give you a little background as to why we're doing this webinar and why your participation is so important. Next slide, please. First, the good news. Um, the Census Bureau came out last, well, a couple weeks ago now with its latest uninsured numbers and showed that once again, uninsured rates declined nationwide from 2013 to 2016. The uninsured rate in Illinois was cut nearly in half over the past three years, down to 6.5% in 2016, which is an astounding accomplishment in such a short amount of time. And this is in large part due to the Affordable Care Act, and in particular, the Medicaid expansion, as you can see on this slide. Next slide, please. More than 1 million Illinois residents have gotten coverage due to the ACA. And this is a combination of about 650,000 through the Medicaid expansion and 350,000 through the marketplace. Next slide. 
Also in the good news category, um, at least half of the uninsured adults do have affordable coverage options available to them, either through Medicaid or through the marketplace with subsidies. However, the problem is that they don't know about these options. Next slide, please. So the Commonwealth Fund found that 40% or two in five uninsured adults are not aware of the marketplaces still. And this is even more so for people at lower incomes and in minority populations. Next slide. Also, um, six in 10 uninsured adults who were aware of the marketplace did not visit because they didn't think they could afford coverage. Next slide. So, you know, it's not surprising we have all of this confusion and we've had it the last couple years in open enrollment, but it's even more compounded this year due to policy and politics. And I'm gonna go over now some of the frequently asked questions that we've heard, maybe you've heard um, in a clinic setting, and we will continue to hear through open enrollment. Um, so the first question is, if the ACA gets repealed, when will changes go into effect? Well, I'm happy to answer that it is not repealed. Um, and yesterday, the latest version of the ACA repeal, which is the Graham-Cassidy bill, um, died in the Senate. And fingers crossed, Republicans have said they are moving on to tax reform. That being said, we have to keep up the vigilance um, as ACA sabotage will continue under this administration. Um, and in fact, we just heard last week that um, they announced that healthcare.gov would be closed for um, Sundays during open enrollment from 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. for um, maintenance. So this is what could be you know, very confusing for consumers and we just wanted to make sure you knew that that was happening. Um, there will be more about that later. But um, some other questions that we've gotten from the field is will funding for assisters continue to exist? And we finally know the answer to this. Um, we just heard the last two weeks that funding for navigators, the navigator program was cut dramatically by the Trump administration. Fortunately, the navigator groups in Chicago were mostly spared the large cuts, but unfortunately, navigators in central Illinois had drastic cuts. So right now, agencies in these areas are still figuring out their programs. That being said, there are certified application counselors or CACs in all of the health centers across the state and also in many other locations. Um, but the bottom line is there will be a smaller workforce this year in Illinois and across the country. Another question that we hear of often is what will happen to the Medicaid expansion? Is it still around? How about the CHIP program? The Children's Health Insurance program, is that still around? So the Medicaid expansion is still here. Nothing has changed in Illinois um, and that will continue. Um, and that's the same for the CHIP program. But it's important to note that this program still needs to be reauthorized by Saturday, um, September 30th, and we are hoping that will happen on a bipartisan basis. Um, but nothing has changed at this point for all kids in Illinois. And if anything does change, we will all uh, let um, you as providers and advocates and consumers know. Another question we get all the time is, does the individual mandate or the penalties still exist? And the answer to that is yes. Um, we don't know how the IRS will enforce it under the new administration, but it is still the law of the land for everyone to obtain health insurance or get an exemption um, if they qualify. And then the last question, which is kind of the million dollar question, is what coverage options will consumers have in 2018? So consumers will still have the Medicaid expansion, as I said, and all other Medicaid programs. They also will still have marketplace plans in every county in Illinois. We have heard that there are 13 counties with only one carrier, one insurance company, but there will be several plans um, offered. So we don't know yet what the prices and plans exactly look like. We probably won't know until mid-October. We do know that the proposed rates coming in were significantly higher last year than last year um, due to the uncertainty caused by this administration. Um, that being said, most marketplace consumers will be sheltered from those increases because they receive a premium tax credit in the marketplace. So lots of questions, and hopefully I've helped to um, uh, answer some of those um, that you might be hearing. Next slide, please. So back to the good news. Um, you know, 
there are a lot of um, experienced and successful outreach education and enrollment partners in Illinois. Um, we have some on the webinar with us that will talk to you after I speak. Um, plus, added to that is the incredible energy and community engagement on the ground level in grassroots groups fresh off the fight to protect the ACA. So those, and you can see some of the logos of those groups that really have gotten involved um, in the fight um, and they really want to get involved in um, ACA enrollment. So together, I think we can harness these two efforts and really maximize enrollment in Illinois this year. Next slide, please. Um, and just a reminder, consumers are twice as likely to successfully enroll having help, having in-person assistance. Um, so that just underscores that if you come across clients who are looking for care or insurance, it's really important to get them connected to that help. Next slide. So um, open enrollment is, is upon us, as Elena said. Um, so the four key date dates you should remember is November 1st is when it starts. You can start shopping for plans. Um, open enrollment ends December 15th. So in order to get a plan that starts on January 1st, you must sign up by December 15th. And um, it is much shorter this year than last year and in years past. So we have to just keep on um, uh, keep the drumbeat on about the, the short enrollment date. Of course, Medicaid enrollment is always, always open. Um, so I know that that brings about a lot of confusion, but people can enroll in Medicaid at any time. And um, again, this year, Get Covered Illinois is the brand of the Illinois marketplace. Next slide. So just a reminder that Illinois runs what's called a partnership marketplace, and it always has. So what that means is that the DOI, the Department of Insurance in Illinois, is the lead on the plan management activities. And what that means is that they oversee, um, they look at all the qualified health plans that apply to be on the marketplace, they review them, and they send that off to CMS for the final review. And the staff at the Department of Insurance sort of looks at and oversees um, these plans. Also, as a consumer assistance partner, Illinois has its own brand, website um, through Get Covered Illinois and its own call center. Um, plus, DOI does manage the assister certification in Illinois. Next slide. So as a partnership mar marketplace, Illinois uses healthcare.gov for marketplace eligibility and enrollment, and then uses um, the aid system, which is the application for benefits eligibility for the Medicaid program. So on the back end, you should just know that the federal system and the state's ABE system sort of, they, they are connected on the back end and they send applications back and forth. So if someone does get into the wrong, you know, applies on the marketplace, but really should be in Medicaid, um, the application will get transferred to Medicaid. That being said, if you know or you think your client is Medicaid eligible, you should always start in ABE uh, because it'll just uh, make it a quicker process. So in addition to Get Covered Illinois and the federal site, um, we have an entire enrollment coalition in Illinois that's called the Illinois Coalition for Health Access, or ICHA, um, that's here to support the workforce um, and really getting the word out about healthcare access in, in Illinois. So this slide shows the roles of certified application counselors and navigators in Illinois. Um, and just in case, you know, you weren't familiar with them. Um, they are community-based. None of them receive commission. Um, they're either funded through federal grants or some, some other uh, programmatic funding. Um, and they, are, they provide unbiased support focused on the client's best interests. In addition to signing people up for coverage, they do a whole host of activities, including outreach, education, referral, post-enrollment counseling, health literacy, and case management. And you can continue that slide. It's, it kind of starts popping up. All this, all the, here are all the different um, uh, roles that they play. So most people think that maybe um, CACs and navigators, that their role stops once they enroll someone in Medicaid and Marketplace, but that's just not true. They do a lot of handholding and education, especially for clients who've never had insurance before. Next slide. So, um, Navigators, um, the difference between navigators and CACs is that navigators are funded through a federal grant. 
but local organizations can sign up to be certified application counselors. And this is a process that is done through CMS, and I sort of list it out here. Um, and once an organization becomes a CAC organization, then people within that organization can become certified as a CAC. Next slide, please. Here's a little more information on what it takes to become a CAC. Um, you have to go through federal training, and then you have to recertify annually through Illinois Department of Insurance. Next slide. Um, and in the past years, CACs and navigators had to undergo state training as well. But this year, um, and I think last year too, they only have to complete federal training. So um, if anyone still wants to or is interested in becoming a CAC, um, you can feel free to ask me. You can also email this DOI licensing um, email address to um, you know, understand the process. So I'm going to be giving you a bunch of different sort of emails that would be helpful helpful during open enrollment, and this is one of them. Um, get Covered Illinois um, has a listserv basically for all participants who want to get more information regarding certification or the changing policies on outreach and education. And um, you can feel free to follow that link um, after the webinar is over to register for the GCI um, listserv. So similar to what um, Families USA um, showed us in terms of their national research, here are all the different questions that we're hearing in the community. Um, you know, do I still have my health insurance? Wasn't the ACA repealed though? I heard the ACA is about to implode. All these things we're gonna continue to hear, I am sure, um, throughout open enrollment. So um, ICHA created this wonderful flyer um, which gives you and anyone else sort of the four facts that you need to know before open enrollment. Um, and if you only know, you know, if you only take these things from my presentation, this is what I would say. You know, the ACA is still here. If you enroll in the plan for 2018, you will have health insurance in 2018. You may get a discount. Eight out of 10 people get a discount through premium tax credits. The third is ignore the headlines. Even if you think you can't afford health insurance, you should come in, you should meet with someone, you should shop around. And lastly, free local in-person enrollment help is available. So these flyers are available on the ICHA website and we can also send this around after the webinar. Um, here's the flyer also in Spanish. So they did a great job um, with sort of putting it all in one place. So I'm gonna, now tell you just some other ways you can help get involved um, with open enrollment. So your voice and everyone's voice really matters. Uh, we have a story bank here that where you can share your Medicaid or marketplace story. And I can't tell you how helpful these stories were um, during the ACA debate. Um, legislators spoke of them on the House and Senate floor. We shared them with um, news, newspapers and so please do share your positive stories. Amplify the message. You'll be hearing and getting lots of key messages to share over social media. So please do amplify those as we get closer to the date. Um, third, you can connect on the connector. And I'll tell you a little about that on the, the next slide. Um, the connector is a scheduling tool in Illinois uh, where people can search for a sister so they can search for that in-person help near them. They can look by their zip code and by the language that they speak. So uh, once they do that, you can see here, um, you can actually schedule an appointment online. So it's a really good way if someone's coming into your clinic or your agency and you are not an assister, but you wanna get them set up with someone, it's a great way to get them set up um, to schedule an appointment right then and there while you have them in your office. So that um, web link is on the ICHA website as well. There are three other ways you can help during open enrollment too. So if you are not certified or don't want to get certified, you can still help with community outreach and you know, put, putting out flyers. Um, you can volunteer to help out at enrollment sites with things like setting up email accounts or screening clients or greeting clients. Um, and then of course you can take on a bigger role of becoming a CAC. Um, and I would say the next um, 
sort of email that you should sign up for if you're interested is at the ICHA mailing list, which would be here on their website, and they can help connect you with all of these resources um, that I've mentioned. So for those of you who are already CACs and navigators and you do want a little more training, um, we are offering some in-person training, training we call OE5 Bootcamp. Um, and that's happening next month in Chicago on October 11th and 12th, and Springfield October 24th and 25th, and then in DuPage for people who are assisting clients in DuPage, Kane, and DeKalb counties, um, and the registration links are there too. Um, and it's a great way just to meet with other sisters and also to ask in-person questions and um, kind of go through some complicated enrollment um, scenarios with, with others. And lastly, I just wanted to highlight um, the Protect Our Care Illinois Coalition, which in the past nine months has been re working really hard to um, prevent the repeal of the ACA and prevent disastrous changes to Medicaid. And you know, hopefully we can rest a little bit on that, but we will be pivoting to ensuring people get enrolled in coverage. And um, so be sure to check us out. Um, our website is there and um, our social media links are there as well. And I think that's all. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for that presentation. If you are interested in getting more information about the boot camps or would like information about signing up, please email me and I will help coordinate and get you in touch with Stephanie and the people that you need to. Moving on, though, on the ground with Rachel um, there from Howard Brown Health. She is an outreach and enrollment coordinator. Hello, Rachel. Hi, everyone. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, great. So uh, thank you so much, Stephanie, for all of that great information on uh, open enrollment. Um, I am the Outreach and Enrollment Coordinator at Howard Brown Health, and I work directly with clients to help them get insurance. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, so I'm going to talk specifically about people living with HIV and what things to consider specifically for this population, but I think that a lot of the lessons from working with this community can be applied to anyone who needs insurance. Um, so just a little bit of background on what navigators and certified application counselors do. I think Stephanie already gave a really good overview of this. It's so much more than just enrollment. Um, we really have to understand clients' needs, help the clients understand their options. Uh, we do help them enroll, but we also provide health insurance, literacy, education, and a variety of post-enrollment assistance activities to make sure that they actually use their health insurance and stay enrolled. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, so who should care about open enrollment? Um, I think it's really important that Everyone pays attention to open enrollment. Um, obviously, as Stephanie said, um, people who have Medicaid, they can get their Medicaid any day of the year. Um, but both people who are uninsured and people who are already enrolled should care about open enrollment. Um, so for people who are uninsured, obviously, this is their time to get health insurance. Um, and I wanted to add here, I know um, later in the webinar, Matthew is going to go a little bit more into detail on how people living with HIV are able to get premium assistance um, through the Illinois Department of Public Health. Um, but I wanted to throw in here that if you do have clients who are undocumented, um, typically these folks struggle to get health insurance because their only option is to get insurance off of the marketplace. Um, and that could be very expensive. But for people who are undocumented and living with HIV, they can actually get premium assistance um, through the Ryan White Part B program, um, which again, Matthew will talk about more um, later on. Um, but it provides a really good opportunity for those folks to get health insurance. So I think that's important to know. Um, and then the other piece that I wanted to mention is that renewal is very, very important. Um, people who are already enrolled might I um, think they don't have to do anything, but the plans change every year. Um, prices go up, networks change, coverage changes, and so it's really important that people understand 
um, their options and make sure that there isn't a better option out there for them. The other thing that I wanted to mention here is that even if people do choose to stick with the same plan, the premiums do change every year. And I've seen a lot of people who either set up their premium on auto payments or if they're getting their premiums paid for by um, the Ryan White Part B program, if they don't update that premium information, they end up losing their insurance. Um, so renewal is a really crucial step um, to make sure that people actually keep insurance year after year. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, so what we're doing right now at Howard Brown um, is really getting super prepared for open enrollment. Um, as Stephanie said, it's a shortened period. There's a smaller a sister workforce out there. There is a lot of confusion and fear among people. Um, our clients and patients are confused about whether the Affordable Care Act is even an option anymore. And so we're really focusing on that preparation piece this year to reassure um, clients and patients so that they can get insurance and that there are concrete steps that they can take to take care of their health care. Um, and also to make our jobs more efficient um, throughout the enrollment period. So we're really encouraging everyone right now, if they're starting to think about open enrollment, to make sure they have their login information <laughs> for healthcare.gov. Um, you know, especially as Stephanie was saying, with the um, healthcare.gov going to be shut down a little bit more frequently, um, the less time that we have to spend resetting passwords and stuff, the better. Um, so that's a great thing people could do to prepare. Um, people should really start thinking about what they need their health insurance to cover. Um, their medical providers, mental health providers, medications that they take. Um, you know, people are scared about how much insurance is going to cost them. Uh, there is financial assistance available um, and people need to come prepared understanding what their income looks like and how much they think they can afford. Um, so those are all things that people can start getting together now. And these are also things that you can help clients with even if you're not a certified application counselor, even if you're not a navigator. Um, you can have these conversations with your clients so that they are in the best position to be in when they go to actually enroll in insurance um, this November and December. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so um, the nuts and bolts of plan selection kind of goes over a lot of the things that I was just talking about. So, you know, for people living with HIV, there are very specific things to consider, um, including if it is a plan that the Ryan White program is going to pay for, um, what, uh, which of their medications are covered by the insurance, um, as Matthew will say later on, um, the Ryan White program or ADAP will cover medications regardless of um, whether they're on the insurance formulary, but it's always a good idea to know what medications are covered. Um, and the other really, really important piece that I always talk about specifically with um, people who are living with HIV is what the cost is for um, lab work and diagnostic testing because those labs are really expensive and people have to get those at least twice a year. Um, so those are things that are kind of specific to people living with HIV, but I also think it's something that you should look at for everybody. Um, are your doctors in network? Can you afford the premium? Are your medications covered? And looking at the out-of-pocket costs. Um, and so this is, I think, one of the most important um, roles of an assister is really helping clients understand their insurance. It's not just picking out the plan. It's understanding what the plan covers and what they're going to have to pay out of pocket throughout the year. Um, this is the number one thing that complaint, I guess, that I hear from people is, you know, someone enrolls in insurance and then six months down the road, they go to the doctor and they get super angry when they get a bill from the lab. Um, and so the more that we can do up front to make sure people are picking a plan that's really going to meet their needs and picking a plan that they're going to be happy with, um, you know, the better it's going to be for everyone. They're going to be more likely to keep their plan. They're going to be more likely to get the health care that they need. Um, and it's just going to make things better for everyone. So uh, this is a very crucial part of the um, enrollment process. Um, next slide, please. 
All right, so as I've been touching on um, throughout this presentation, I think that working with um, communities impacted by HIV um, gives us a lot of lessons that can be applied to everyone looking into their insurance options. Um, so the first one is that, you know, people who are living with HIV, they can get medication, financial assistance, and premium assistance through the Ryan White Part B program. Um, but this is something that everyone can look into. Um, a lot of people who are taking non-HIV medications can still get financial assistance through drug manufacturers or um, discounts, like charities. Um, and this is super important because as we've heard on the news, out-of-pocket costs can be really high for people. And one way that we can make insurance more usable is to really take advantage of any financial assistance that's out there. I spend a lot of my time helping people sign up for manufacturer discounts or copay cards. Um, also helping people sign up for financial assistance through a hospital or a lab that they're getting a big bill from and they can't afford. So um, I think it's important to keep in mind that there are other forms of financial assistance in addition to the tax credits and the cost sharing reductions that are available through the Affordable Care Act. Um, as I said before, renewal is just as important as new enrollment. Um, to me, I think if people aren't, aren't paying attention during that renewal process, um, very often they end up losing their insurance. And so it's a really, it's a crucial time to reach out to everyone who needs to get insurance through the marketplace, um, whether or not they have it already. And then finally, as I touched on before, the health insurance literacy is really crucial. Without understanding what their insurance covers, people get frustrated, people end up stop paying for their insurance, they stop going to the doctor, um, lots, of, um, lots of frustration. And so um, that's a huge thing for enrollment assisters like me, but also for the, the wider community. You don't have to be um, a certified application counselor to help somebody understand um, health insurance basics. Um, and so I think that that's an important way that everyone can get involved and make sure that this, um, the Affordable Care Act insurance options are really taken advantage of to um, the greatest extent possible. Um, so that's all I have. Um, I guess I will turn this back over to Elena. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. Greatly appreciate it. Moving right along, we will talk about open enrollment and Ryan White programs with the wonderful Matt Fromm. Matt is a medical benefits manager at the AIDS Foundation of Chicago. Welcome. Thank you, Elena. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm here to talk a little bit about um, programs and, and benefits that are specifically available to Ryan White eligible clients. So I'll talk a little bit about who that is um, and about what specifically we do here at the AIDS Foundation of Chicago and with our partners who create these kinds of positions um, to help those people. So I wanna start off by reiterating that uh, the open enrollment period for marketplace insurance plans will present a very short time frame this year to choose new insurance coverage or make changes to existing coverage. Now, as Rachel mentioned, uh, many individuals living with HIV in Illinois are able to access insurance benefits through the marketplace with assistance from Ryan White programs, particularly premium assistance. Um, the premium assistance program here in Illinois will pay most, if not all, of an individual's monthly premium costs for health insurance through the marketplace. So I will be discussing that program and some other forms of assistance in more detail on the next slide. But I bring it up here alongside the important dates for enrollment because it's an additional consideration for Ryan White clients who depend on this assistance. Since the premium payments for these enrollees are expected to continue being made by the Illinois Department of Public Health, clients who plan to access this benefit will need to wait until we receive guidance from IDPH on what plans and coverage levels will be eligible. So traditionally, we receive that information within the first few weeks of open enrollment. And because the open enrollment period is shortened this year, we do know that IDPH is planning on expediting that process as much as possible. However, we just want to reiterate that anyone who's planning on getting premium assistance should not enroll in new coverage or make any changes to their coverage 
until we hear what the guidelines are going to be for this next year. Yeah. So we all know that insurance costs can be overwhelming, uh, particularly when living with a chronic illness such as HIV. So I want to take a moment to review some of the forms of assistance that are available to help reduce these costs, both through the marketplace itself and through Ryan White programs. So on this slide, if you look at the left side of the chart, you can see assistance that's available directly from the marketplace, such as the advanced premium tax credit and cost sharing reductions. And then something to note for uh, Ryan White clients seeking premium assistance is that that advanced premium tax credit must be applied directly to the premium cost. So what that means is when you're enrolling, you have to make sure that you select the advanced option so that it is directly going there and not coming in the form of a refund at the end of the year. In addition, in order to receive this tax credit, an individual must file taxes. And if they are able to file jointly, such as in the case of a married couple, they must do so. A uh, failure to correctly file taxes could lead to a loss of this tax credit um, and that could have some pretty serious consequences. It could mean that you're ineligible for premium assistance, and uh, depending on the circumstances, you may end up owing more money to the IRS at the end of the year, um, which would kind of defeat the purpose of getting this assistance in the first place. Now, on the right side of the chart, you see several additional programs that we have available specifically to individuals living with HIV who qualify based on income. So this is what we mean by Ryan White programs. Um, they're income-based for people living with HIV in the state of Illinois, and there is an upper income limit for this, and currently that's at 500% of the federal poverty level, or around $59,000 per year for a one-person household, and then going up based on larger household sizes. Under that, we have premium assistance, which complements um, the existing ADAP or medication assistance programs at the state by paying for certain marketplace or off-marketplace private health insurance plans that help to assist people living with HIV and AIDS to stay retained in care and receive their medications free of charge. Now, as I mentioned, uh, we will need to wait for information about this year's plans to be released and reviewed by IDPH before we can make any specific recommendations but um, to give you an idea of what they will probably look like, I have included last year's uh, guidelines that were given to us. Now, underneath that, you see a box that says payment requests. That's something that's a little bit more unique to us here at AFC um, and specifically has been set up to assist people living with HIV who are Ryan White eligible, um, living in Cook and the Collar County, so in our region. Um, I can't speak to programs that are outside of that region, so if you are listening from a different region, just make sure you check with your local health department and what is available. So here at AFC, um, we worked with the Illinois Department of Public Health and the Chicago Department of Public Health to allocate some additional funds to assist with out-of-pocket costs for low-income clients living with HIV. So these funds are limited. Um, we, they're not a limitless supply of money and we can't guarantee full coverage for expenses that um, come up at, when someone has insurance. Um, however, we have been able to use these funds in the past for HIV related outpatient medical care. So what that means is that when a patient goes to the doctor um, to get their labs drawn, um, they have a copay for that. They have a copay for their doctor's visit. They might be referred to a specialist. All of that, maybe they have a deductible that they have to meet. What can happen is that we can use these funds to assist with meeting those costs to help reduce the burden on individuals living with HIV. Now, in order to access that kind of assistance, a Wrangwick client needs to be connected with a case manager or another, another professional who has access to PROVIDE, which is um, our medical record system, and can write care plans and do eligibility assessments in there. So if you're not one of those individuals, you might be wondering, how can I get someone connected to this? And it's pretty simple. If you 
think you have a client or yourself who would benefit from this and be eligible for it, you can just have them contact myself or one of AFC's medical benefits coordinators. Um, and we have a hotline set up that helps you kind of get connected to that here in Cook County and in the Collar County. So the hotline is going to be on a slide a couple slides down, but I'll give it to you right now in case you wanted to write it down. It is 312-784-9071. And just a couple more notes on premium assistance. Uh, it is the kind of primary form of health insurance assistance that Ryan White clients are getting. So when an individual enrolls through the marketplace prior to December 15th, their coverage is going to start on January 1st of 2018. And they'll be told that they're required to make their first payment prior to the first or else their coverage may be canceled. Um, with our clients who are getting premium assistance, those payments are coming from the department, from the Illinois Department of Public Health, not from the client themselves. So in order to make sure that that payment gets out in time, uh, the guidelines are or have been traditionally that the clients have to get that premium information to the Department of, of Public Health by the 15th. So again, we're going to be monitoring that to see if there are any changes coming up. Um, however, we do still anticipate that people will have to get their premium information in earlier than the last day of the year um, so that there's enough time for processing and cutting those checks and getting them out in time so that people can get their coverage started on the first. Now, again, uh, we have not received specific information about the cost of plan this year, but uh, last year IDPH agreed to pay up to $750 per month in premium costs. And depending on an individual's situation, such as their age, whether they use tobacco products, and whether they're applying on or off marketplace, the costs have sometimes been above that upper limit of $750. So for clients who are able to make the additional cost above $750, uh, those payments also must be made directly to IDPH before they will send out their portion of the premium payment. So just another thing to keep in mind when speaking about this type of assistance to clients. And then finally, um, all medication assistance or ADAP prescriptions must be dispensed through CVS Caremark Specialty Pharmacy in order to continue receiving premium assistance. So this is a mail order pharmacy that is separate from the retail CVS pharmacy system. Um, it's been contracted with the state to work with our ADAP program. And this is an area where we have seen clients sometimes get confused or have some difficulties getting their prescriptions filled. And instead, we'll try to go through other means to get their prescriptions. However, I just really want to make sure that, um, that everyone knows that it is vital that they continue to use this system in order to continue reading receiving premium assistance. It is a requirement that these prescriptions do be filled through CVS Caremark with no exceptions. So if you or any clients um, experience difficulty navigating that, um, coordinating things with ADAP, that's another opportunity where you're welcome to contact myself or the medical benefits coordinators we have um, available through the hotline and we can help kind of navigate those, those issues that could come up. And there are several ways that Ryan White clients can access assistance that is specific to their needs when enrolling in insurance. The first is an organization called the American Exchange. Uh, the Illinois Department of Public Health began a partnership last year with the American Exchange, which helped our clients by filtering options to only include the plans that are eligible for premium assistance. And then by also doing some of the back end work of uh, getting all that information communicated back to the health department and making sure that premium payments are made. We do anticipate that this option will remain again this year. Um, it's available to clients to go directly to that website or call that number. Uh, case managers can do that. And assisters such as the medical benefits coordinators we have um, will also be using that website this year. And IDPH recently announced that they're going to have several webinars next month 
that uh, will be reviewing any changes that are coming up to that process, so be on the lookout for those as well. The second option to get assistance is working directly with uh, one of our Ryan White funded medical benefits coordinators, which include myself and two full-time staff here at AFC, and then an additional two full-time positions serving the Collar Counties that are located at Open Door Clinics in Elgin and Aurora and Catholic Charities of Lake County. Now, to get a referral to one of those medical benefits coordinators or to another insurance assister who's working within the Ryan White system, you can contact that health insurance hotline that I referenced that is here on this slide. And uh, we can get you connected through that, kind of identify your needs, see which assister would be the best for you. We're also in the process of working on a, a feature in our AIDS Foundation of Chicago website that will an, allow an individual to enter in just kind of a little information about their situation. And then from there, it would direct them to the appropriate resource for getting them connected to the type of insurance that they need, whether that be Medicaid, Medicare, um, marketplace insurance, or private insurance off the marketplace. So to kind of close out my section, I, I'd just like to kind of talk about some things to keep in mind. Um, and review kind of what people can do between now and November 1st to prepare themselves or their clients uh, for open enrollment. So again, what you can do now is gather any documentation you think that will be necessary. That can be a list of current medications, uh, the physicians and hospital systems that this client uses or you use, um, information about income, so tax, um, tax documents can be really helpful, um, pay stubs to just kind of see where someone's income lies and what assistance they're, they, are, they have available to them. Uh, their current address, both living address and mailing address, and social security numbers. Uh, if you or your client has login information at healthcare.gov, now is a really good time to make sure you have that login information and that any information that is on that site is up to date. Um, for clients that maybe had gone through American Exchange last year and never created an account on healthcare.gov, now would also be a good time to do that because even if you're using American Exchange, the healthcare.gov website really is the best way to communicate changes to income or address that need to be reported to the marketplace. Uh, thirdly, if someone is receiving that ADAP assistance for medication and premium assistance, now is the time to make sure that everything is up to date there, that everything is running smoothly, that um, there will be a continuation of that coverage, um, and that if it's going to be expiring sometime soon, that um, again, there won't be a gap in that. It's also a good time to check with um, current insurance coverage and make sure that any payments on that account are up to date. Um, something that's new this year um, as part of the changes to the marketplace is that if someone has an insurance plan and their payments are not up to date, their account is not current, that insurance company now has the right to say that you are not allowed to enroll in new coverage um, or continue your coverage as of the end of this year until you bring that account to good standing. So again, now is a really good time to find out if that's part of your situation and then get connected with a navigator um, or certified application counselor to figure out how you're gonna navigate around that. Then finally, um, a really important thing that was again mentioned earlier is that now is a good time to find out what plans your doctor may or may not be in network with next year. And with that, I want to note that the best way to do it is just to contact your provider's office directly. Sometimes we go to the website for the provider's medical group or we go to a hospital's website or even the marketplace's website it might not have the most up-to-date information, especially if they're planning on changing where they're gonna be in network next year. So just contact your, your physician's office directly and find out what their plans are and what suggestions they have for you in terms of uh, keeping your coverage current to make sure you can still get the same care from the same places. 
Um, and again, this, this uh, I mentioned briefly earlier, just that there are some open enrollment webinars coming up that uh, the Illinois Department of Public Health has said will discuss some of the changes coming to the American Exchange and how it applies directly to individuals receiving premium assistance. All right, and then I will toss it back to you. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Matt. That was very informative. I actually learned a few things along the way as well. Uh, just as to note, IDPH will be hosting some webinars that people, including for medical case managers and medical benefits coordinators to review 2018 marketplace changes and enhancements to the enforcement, I'm sorry, to the enrollment process. And we will provide that link in an email as I know a few of you are asking about whether we will be providing the slides or the webinar afterwards. We will be providing the webinar as well to all the attendees, so you'll get a link for that. So, once again, just want to prompt anyone, if you have questions for any of our amazing presenters, you can do so by emailing me at akennedy at aidschicago.org or press the hand raising button and do the side feature. You can continuously input that information um, and ask questions along the way and I will either answer them directly or we'll be responding or we'll have the presenters be responding on the side feature on the right. All right. So the first question that we have I think, Stephanie, this might be a question for you. Okay. I don't remember enrollment being so short in the past. Is this new? If so, is this another way that the Trump administration is trying to undermine the market stability and insurance stability as well as, well as health care access? So, sure, I can take that. Um, you are right. This is much shorter than in years past. Um, I believe the first year was even uh, went from maybe October to March, and it was even six months. It was long. And then it gradually got shorter, but this is dramatically shorter. And um, I guess I can't speak for the Trump administration and the reason why they're doing it, but it sure looks like um, sabotage to me uh, from where I sit, and it makes it much more difficult for um, for people to get coverage, so which is why we need to really double down on our um, efforts to tell people about it. Um, I know that I've seen in the news that despite HHS's um, decision not to advertise as much and to shorten it, that other leaders, um, including President Obama and celebrities, are going to get in there and um, start advertising it themselves. So I guess stay tuned and. Um, you know, we'll do our best to, to make the best of this short enrollment. Thank you so much. The next question is, I'm a person living with a pre-existing condition, so what you're saying is that I can still buy health insurance on the marketplace. Yes, absolutely. There has been no change in any, despite all of the uh, different versions of the bill that, you know, would require states to apply for a waiver about pre-existing conditions and all of that, none of that came to fruition. So yes, um, as long as you apply during open enrollment, um, you will you can get a marketplace plan regardless of health status um, and your premiums won't be higher because of the health status of pre-existing conditions. Thank you so much. This question might be for Rachel or Matt. Shopping for health insurance can be confusing as as soon as large words, not part of my vocabulary, start getting used, I get nervous. Will questions or insurance terms like deductible, coinsurance, out-of-pot maximums, and things like that be something that you and your colleagues can cover? Yeah, I can uh, talk about that. Um, this is Rachel from Howard Brown, and that is absolutely what our job is. We uh, provide education, we speak in a language that you can understand um, and really invite questions. Um, I think the number one thing that I hear from people is, wow, I'm an educated person, but this is really confusing. So um, definitely our enrollment 
office is a safe space for people to uh, get their questions answered and to learn about what insurance is and how it works because we know that it's definitely not a natural thing for people to know. I don't know if that answers your question. And I, I will just reiterate that as well, that you're absolutely right. That's what we do um, as assisters. That's part of our job. And um, additionally to our partner agencies that are out there, if there are any case managers or supervisors, um, the AIDS Foundation of Chicago also can come and do kind of a mini training for your staff to kind of go over these different terms and insurance situations that may be coming up. Um, that you get questions from your clients you don't know how to answer, we can assist you with that as well. Thank you, both of you. So we also have one more question, and just to remind everyone, if you do have questions, please submit them on the question feature. Um, so the question is, I have clients who have high costs, including patients with cancer, who end up costing a lot of money. Are there lifetime limits on their cost of care? So under the ACA, I can take that and, and feel free, um, Rachel and Matt, to jump in. But um, under the ACA, there are no lifetime limits or annual limits on qualified health plans um, in the individual and small group markets. So, um, the client should not be, or consumer should not be faced with that. Um, if you, if they are, I, and I should have mentioned this during my, during my presentation, um, they can always call the OCHI hotline, the Office of Consumer Health Information hotline, um, at the Department of Insurance, because that is where you can go for any sort of complaints, or if you feel like your insurance plan is, um, somehow not following sort of the ACA mandated rules. So um, the person should not run up against that though. Thank you. Another question is, I've heard Blue Cross Blue Shield is removing itself from the marketplace. Is this true? So I can answer that. Um, there's been some misinformation and some confusion because there have been changes and insurance companies pulling out of specific parts of either the marketplace or of Medicaid managed care or Medicare. So between all these different insurance systems we have, there's sometimes some confusion. And it's really alarming when you hear something like Blue Cross Blue Shield, our largest insurance provider in Illinois, may be pulling out of the marketplace. So if you have those kinds of questions, again, an assister is usually a really good person to go to that can kind of verify what's happening. And in this case, I have heard this rumor, and it turns out that they are planning on pulling out of the uh, small business section of the marketplace, not the individual marketplace. So that is not true. Um, they are still planning on being available to all of our clients next year. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, one question for Rachel or Matt also might be, what if my income has changed from what I put on my application? What do you do then? Something you're familiar with? Yeah, I can answer that. So um, if your income changes throughout the year, you can always go back in and report a change of income. Um, and that is also something that an assister can help with. Um, if your income changes mid-year and you never update it, then all that's gonna happen is when you file your taxes at the end of the year, you might have to sort of compare the amount you put on the application with the amount that you actually end up making. Um, and then, you know, if you make less money than you thought you were gonna make, you'll get some of that tax credit refunded to you. And if you end up making more money, then you have to pay some back when you file your taxes. Um, so that's something if your income's changing mid-year. Um, if it's a situation where you think you're going to make a different amount next year, then that would be a really good reason to go back to the marketplace and update your application instead of just automatically re-enrolling in the same plan you had last year because the amount of financial assistance that is available to you may very well change if your income has changed. Thank you so much. 
I'm going to paraphrase this question as well. So say that you or one of your clients ends up losing their employment insurance during the course of the year. What happens? Can they sign up for on the enrollment plan? Yeah, so I can answer that, Ms. Matt. Um, generally, yes. Yeah, there, there are a number of reasons why someone could enroll outside of the open enrollment period. And one of those reasons is loss of qualifying coverage. So if you lose coverage because you, your employment changed or you lost employment, um, or if your employer stopped carrying insurance, decided we're not going to offer insurance anymore, um, that would typically be a reason that you could apply for what's called a special enrollment that can happen any time of the year. Just something to note is that um, one of the reasons we see a lot of people wanting to get a special enrollment is because their coverage was dropped due to non-payments. And again, that ties back to the premium assistance. If something went wrong with your premium assistance throughout the year, you didn't update stuff or the amount went up and that wasn't communicated to IDPH and coverage gets dropped, unfortunately, that's typically not a reason we can trigger a special enrollment. So that's, again, um, kind of like Rachel was saying, it's really important to keep everything up to date with your income, um, both with the marketplace and when there are changes to your coverage or, um, or, or your eligibility with the Illinois Department of Public Health as far as your premium assistance goes. So what if someone forgets or has complications and doesn't sign up for enrollment until December 16th. What happens then? I'll, I'll answer. Okay. Um, unfortunately, it, uh, probably they, they will not be able to, depending on the complications. If it was a complication like they were physically unable to enroll because of something like a serious illness, being hospitalized, or if let's say the, um, the healthcare.gov website goes down, the website crashes on the last day of enrollment and you aren't able to enroll, we could try to apply for a special enrollment based off of that. Um, just with any of these things, if that does happen to someone, just know that there also needs to be some kind of evidence and documentation of why you weren't able to enroll during open enrollment. Um, so it's not an easy just, oh, I forgot, I'm going to say that I was hospitalized. Well, they need proof. They need your hospital records to show that. I just wanted to add that if someone does miss the open enrollment period, um, they should still talk to an assister because, you know, if their income is low enough, they may be eligible to get Medicaid, which does not have an enrollment period. Um, and worst case scenario, you could always go to a federally qualified health center or someplace that has a sliding scale where you can pay out of pocket for care. Um, but obviously the best way to prevent this is to know when the open enrollment period ends. Um, but there are some options. Thank you so much. Um, just to reiterate as well, if there are any other questions, you can submit them in the question side. Once again, we are getting a question about whether the slides and the presentation will be sent to attendees. Just want to reiterate to everyone that yes, the webinar in its entirety will be sent to those who attended or signed up for the webinar. So at this time, the final more question and asking for elaboration is on those shutdown periods. There are times where the, and I'll take, I'll field this one a little bit, there will be times where the website will be down. Uh, HHS is saying that this is routine maintenance and that this happens. Uh, speaking to the frequency of whether this has happened in the past, both in 2015 and in 2016, the website was working and functional during the open enrollment period 99.9% .9 of the time. This year, the website will be down um, and will only be functioning 92 to 93% of the time. As Stephanie had mentioned, on Sundays between 12 a.m. to 12 p.m., that website will be down, except for on December 10th. It will also be down once more 
on the night of open enrollment. And I just want to encourage anyone who is signing up or is signing up people not to have them be discouraged by this. The uh, weekends are high utilization times where people take the time to actually review plans and have time to go through the process. Please do not be discouraged. The website uh, is working and there are amazing people like Matthew and Rachel and everyone else who are there to support you, help you, and will help you or your client sign up. So once again, I want to pause and say thank you to all of our amazing panelists and to all the attendees. We really appreciate it. This is an important time. Enrollment is very vital for the health of our community here in Illinois and those living with HIV across the country. And so we appreciate it. You can visit um, the AFC website as well and learn more about open enrollment shortly. We will once again be sending these slides to you and if you have further advocacy or other questions you can always call uh, AFC or visit our website at aidchicago.org. Once again, thank you everyone. <laughs>